Good morning, my friends. Welcome to Daily Devotionals here at Springfield United Methodist Church on this wonderful Friday that we're celebrating together. I hope you have um, just a great weekend um, in store for yourself and looking forward to um, just these wonderful blessings that we're going to have today in God's um, holy word. Again, just a couple of announcements here at the very beginning. The first one is please again feel free to join us Sundays for uh, worship service. This Sunday will be um, 9 o'clock Sunday School with Keith Martin on Facebook Live. And then we will also have our 10 o'clock worship service, Facebook Live as well, on this upcoming Father's Day. And then going into the weeks to come, we're going to have in-person worship services again. Those will be at 8 o'clock um, outside with singing. Um, we will be uh, inside at 930 uh, with masks being required to uh, help create a safe environment for those who are wanting a safe environment to worship. Um, no congregational singing. Both the 8 and 9.30 will have praise and worship services. And at 11 o'clock, we will have um, a traditional worship service in the sanctuary. No congregational singing, um, but masks will be optional for that service. And so we have a, uh, an online registration. An email was sent out through the church. Um, and so hopefully you are signed up. We've had a great sign up so far, but make sure you do that in the next uh, couple of days uh, as we get ready for worship again. We will continue also to uh, stream online our Sunday School with Keith Martin at 930 starting June 28th. And we will continue to stream our worship service. Our goal will be to uh, be able to stream the 8 o'clock, to stream the 11 live and then the 9.30 to record and put on Facebook as well. That's our goal. That's what we're trying to do, and uh, we'll learn in the process. Also today, I uh, wanted to uh, let you be aware that we have our car communion, which is our drive through communion, coming up uh, next Wednesday from 5 to 7 p.m., and so I want to invite you to come out for that. We're also going to have a little goodie bag of snacks you can eat while you're waiting for communion to come. And then after car communion for those who like to participate. We're going to do um, just a time of prayer over uh, our church and over our um, just getting prepared for our worship services. That hopefully we'll start at 7 and be done by 730. And we just want to take some time to pray over the church and, and outside. So those are some things coming up. Glad to be with you today. Hopefully you're getting sound right now. I'm actually going to go check real quick. So if we're not getting any sound right now, please put that in the messages and, and then I'll know and, and we'll adjust here. All right, but I'm going to check that real quick for us. All right, based off your responses, I think we're okay. So we're going to give it a shot. But we're in Luke chapter 22. I'm going to invite you to go there in your Bibles with me today. Luke chapter 22. Um, you know, just enjoy so much... Um, reading through this gospel letter together. You know, just a reminder, you know, here's Luke. Luke did not know Jesus firsthand. Um, he is uh, writing this gospel. He's collected all these different um, um, stories and real-life moments of Jesus and his teachings. He's um, had direct interaction with um, those who personally were with Christ. And, and so he's put together, after a lot of research, a lot of interviewing, uh, a lot of... Uh, just gathering, you know, all this real life ministry of Jesus, and he's put together this gospel to share, particularly with those who've never heard. I think now that's true for all the gospels, but yet he's writing to people who, um, you know, all this is fresh and new. And so that's such a beautiful thing uh, for us because, you know, when we come to the Bible, um, you know, it, it's fresh and new to us. And, and even though we may have been writing, reading the Bible for most of our lives now, it's a beautiful way in which God and the Holy Spirit brings fresh and new revelation. So we're in Luke chapter 22. Go with me to verse number 14. So setting a little context here. This is Thursday night. This is the night that Jesus is going to be betrayed. And then on Friday he will be crucified. So that little context of what day, where we're at, and what we call Holy Week. And then what we also have here is we have... The disciples sitting down with Jesus to celebrate the Passover meal. Now, Passover always refers back to the Old Testament. It refers to the last of the ten plagues that God used to help deliver his people out of slavery in Egypt. 
And that last plague was where the, the angel of death was going to move across the land and kill every firstborn son and every uh, firstborn uh, animal. And so the way in which God's people were going to be spared is they were told to take uh, a lamb. And with that lamb, they were to take the blood from the lamb and put it over the doorpost, right? So when the angel of death moved over the land that night, when God moved across the land that night, when he saw the blood of the lamb, the blood of the lamb would provide that protection that God said that he would not destroy the homes covered with the blood of the lamb. He also told um, them how to prepare the Passover meal with unleavened bread. You know, that was to represent that they were going to need to be ready to leave quickly. That after this devastation of all the Egyptian firstborn sons and their firstborn livestock being just, you know, destroyed, being put to death, that, you know, Pharaoh is going to be ready at that time to immediately say, hey, get out of here, you know, leave our land. And so this was a very sacred and special meal because it commemorates the most significant event to happen in the Old Testament for God's people. To this day, they continue to celebrate, the Jewish people do, Passover, remembering this mighty move of God to deliver them out of slavery and begin to lead them towards the promised land. So that's the context we have here of Jesus sitting down with his disciples in the scriptures we're about to read. So let's read that together. Verse 14. When the time came, Jesus and the apostles sat down together at the table. And Jesus said, I've been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. So he's been telling them about that he's going to be betrayed, he's going to be killed, and he's going to rise on the third day. They still haven't gotten it. But notice here that he again makes a reference to it when he talks about before my suffering begins. Verse 16, Jesus says, For I tell you now that I won't eat this meal again, until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Verse 17. Then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. And he said, take this and share it among yourselves. For I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God uh, has come. So notice here that he's speaking to them about, hey, this is the last time that I'm going to have this meal um, before the kingdom of God is fulfilled until God brings all things together in the great uh, banquet celebration in heaven one day to come. Then he goes on in verse 19, he says, he took some bread, so now he's taking that unleavened bread, which would have been a reminder to them of the Passover lamb. It would have been a reminder to them of how God said, prepare yourselves, I'm coming to move in a mighty way, prepare yourselves to follow me out of slavery into freedom. Be prepared to leave quickly, right? And so he takes that bread, all right, and he breaks it in pieces. He says, this is my body, which is given for you. Now, notice what he's doing here. He's changing the significance, the understanding, right, of what this meal is meant to be. Before, it's representing the Passover lamb that was slain to help provide that covering of protection against God's wrath, right? Now, what Jesus is about to do is to let them know that he is the Passover lamb of God who comes to take God's wrath and to lead us then into freedom of everlasting life, right? And so he's like, you know, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He's like, from now on, every time that you have this meal, anytime you do it, remember me. Remember my sacrifice for you. Verse 20, after supper, he took another cup of wine. He says, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. And so here Jesus now takes the cup of wine and he says, what we're about to do now is a new covenant that God is establishing with you and all people to come. Now a covenant it's this agreement that takes place between two different parties, right? And it is a binding agreement that takes place there. And so God made covenants all throughout the Old Testament. Now he's making a new covenant through Jesus with not only the disciples, but for all of us today, this new covenant of the way in which God brings his sacrifice of life, his blessing of eternal life, his care for eternal life to you and to me. 
and he does it through his son, Jesus. Jesus says, this blood is going to be confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. And so it's the sacrifice of Jesus that brings about this agreement of the relationship that we're able to have with God Almighty um, through the sacrifice of Jesus with us. I don't know about y'all, but man, I, I love Holy Communion. You know, there's something special about you know, taking that piece of bread, you know, dipping it into the juice or taking it in the cup and remembering the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. You know, I always think about the cross. I think about Jesus dying on the cross and there on the cross, there his blood is being poured out. And it's not just because of the wounds. I mean, it is obviously, but, but that blood being poured out represents his covering over us. So that God's judgment will not be upon us. His blood represents the blood that gives us life. That when sacrifices were made in the Old Testament, you know, they talked about how life was in the blood. It was the idea that one life is giving their life to another. That's what the idea of sacrifices were about. Here Jesus is saying, I'm giving my life to you so you can live in my life. When I think about the blood of Jesus Christ, you know, I think about... Uh, you know, wonderful hymns like nothing but the blood of Jesus. You know, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus, right? And the way through the sacrifice of Jesus, there's a cleansing, there's a purifying, there's a forgiveness of God's grace that you and I receive in our lives. You know, there's something powerful about coming down to, that, to the altar and kneeling in prayer during Holy Communion, right? And just taking a moment to, to acknowledge again, God, I'm a sinner but you have saved me by your amazing grace through a covenant you made through the sacrifice of your son, Jesus. And this body, this bread, and this cup, his blood are given for me. Y'all, I, I am thankful for the way in which Jesus made that sacrifice for you and me. Amen. I'm thankful for the way that God forgives all of our sins and cleanses us to make us his right people to live out a right relationship with our almighty God. I'm thankful for the way that we can have times like communion and uh, gather together and, you know, be able to share in the body and blood of Christ and to have that prayer of God's blessing upon our lives. Notice here that, that for Jesus, this is so significant because he's, he's letting them know, yes, God is the one who rescues. God is the one who saved in the Passover, right? I want you to know, Jesus was telling them and us today, God is the one who always rescues, and God is the one who always saves. And that he is the one that saves us through his son, Jesus Christ. Let's remember that great sacrifice of Christ for our lives today. All right, let's go a little bit further here today in Luke chapter 22. Let's go to verse um, uh, 24. Notice that, uh, so Jesus has told them that one of them is going to betray him, okay, in the preceding verses. And now, verse 24, they begin to argue among themselves about who would be the greatest among them. You know, Jesus had to shake his head a lot, I think, with the disciples. You know, have you ever just had those moments with your children, grandchildren, and, you know, they just, you know, are sweet one moment, and then immediately, bam, they're just doing something else, right? And you're just kind of like, how do we go from sweet to sour um, that quickly, <laughs> right? <coughs> Excuse me. And so it's in this moment that the disciples begin to argue about who's going to be the greatest in heaven. Let's look at what happens. Jesus said in verse 25, In this world, kings and great men lord it over their people, yet they are called friends of the people. But among you it will be different. Those who are greatest among you should take the lowest rank, and the leader should be like a servant. Who is more important, the one who sits at the table or the one who serves? The one who sits at the table, of course, but not here. For I am among you as one who serves. You have stayed with me in my time of trial. And just as my father has granted me a kingdom, I now grant you the right to eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So Jesus is like... You know, why are you arguing about something that's so petty? Why are you so focused on who's the greatest? 
Have you not seen my life? Have you not seen my example? Here I am, the Son of God. Here I am, the one who is everlasting life. What example have I given you? Have I made you to serve me? Have I had everybody come and serve me and sit in a palace? No. He says, I'm the one who's gone out. I'm the one who's gone to the one who was lost. I'm the one who's gone to the broken, to the sick, to the hurting, to the devastated in life. I'm the one who's gone to the rejected. I'm the one who has washed your feet. I'm the one who's taken the place of a servant to show you that the life that you're called to live, the leadership that you're to show, the life that you are to live out for me is to be a life of service where you acknowledge that I'm the king, I'm the master, that I've given you every good and perfect gift and that we relate as sons and daughters of the king. But yet in that place, you live your life to absolutely honor me. You know, I think that's a great thing to think about today. Who's the king of our life? Is it Jesus or is it ourself? Is Jesus the priority or have we made something else the priority of our life and that's what we're allowing to dominate our lives? Do we seem to be in a group of people and to be the ones who look to serve? Are we in a group of people looking to be the ones who take? You know, there's a place in which we are called to humble ourselves in the sight of God and other people and to love and to serve and to care for one another. Jesus says, that's the way you're meant to be. He's like, I'm telling you, you're going to be in my kingdom one day. And yes, in that place, you're going to have responsibilities. But yet, don't look at the responsibilities, some title to live for. Look at the responsibilities, a great honor and a humble service unto the king. You know, it's a beautiful thing in our lives when we come to know how much we've been given from God, <laughs> that we've been given everlasting life, and that our life is not one to be takers. So I, I just want to encourage us today, as we're going about living our lives for God, let's remember the sacrifice of Jesus. Let's remember a new covenant, a binding eternal agreement that God made through his son Jesus that through the body and the blood of Christ all those who place their faith in Jesus become sons and daughters of God all those who receive the gift of everlasting life know complete forgiveness of sins a pure heart a pure life lived out for the glory of the Lord my friends I love you have a happy Friday let's take a moment to pray together today Lord you are awesome and we thank you for your good, good grace towards us. We thank you, Jesus, for the body and the blood that represent your tremendous sacrifice for us on the cross. And God, the way that you've come to purify us forever. Father, lead us now and always to live a life of humility and service to you, King Jesus. We pray this great blessing in Christ's name. Amen. My friends, we love you. Look forward to worship with you Sunday. Have a great, great weekend. God bless you.